Good evening. Welcome to everyone. Probably fairly familiar with the, the custom of Havdalah um, to overflow the wine. So let some of the wine you pour over the top of the cup. You know, the cup runneth over. Um, and the, the ostensible reason for this is that you want the flow of blessing literally to run over. And so as a sign of, of bracha, you have a cup overflowing with bracha. The Kabbalist called the Rikanti gives us a very strange, interesting, different reason for this custom. He says this custom is to favor the family of Korach. Now, Korach's family ended up, we all know, uh, perishing as a result of a of a uh, rebellion against Aaron, which we, we, we're going to, to look at a bit in more detail in a few moments. And as a result of this rebellion, Korach and his family and all who followed him ended up being swallowed up by the ground. Uh, so some got swallowed up by the ground, others got you know, perished in a fire um, that came from, from, from the Keturah that they were offering, which they weren't licensed to, they weren't meant to uh, bring. And, uh, and uh, now they, uh, they like Shabbat. They don't like the week. Um, and why is that? Because uh, the uh, even the wicked who spend their uh, weeks in a place I'd rather not mention, uh, come Shabbos, there's a furlough. And uh, even the worst of the worst get to escape from that, that terrible place, um, and they get to enjoy a Shabbos. At the end of Shabbos, of course, there is uh, the sadness that we make have a dollar. And with that, we, we kind of say goodbye to Shabbos and move move into the week um, and uh, and uh, you know with that uh, the family of Korach is not very happy because they, they return uh, to the place that is not very restful for the soul so in their honor we uh, overspill the wine and, 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 and that's for them that's, uh, that's something a little bit different of an approach for, for why we spill the wine so we got to understand Korach Havdallah, uh, you know, what's, what's that all about? And let's try and put some sense into it. So what was Korach and his followings, followers' um, argument? They came along and they challenged the appointment of Aaron, um, suggesting it was nepotism, uh, suggesting Moshe was kind of keeping everything in the family. And if you start studying the Pasha Korach with, uh, with more uh, commentary, you find that it, 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 runs, uh, it runs deep. There are other appointments that they considered that Moshe had done. Um, and a suggestion is that they are you know, his own appointments, which, of course, we all know they weren't. It was you know, Hashem directing him. And so they, they're challenging Aaron. But here's an interesting medrash. And the Medrash, Medrash Tanchuma, Medrash Tanchuma um, points out to the flow, to what happened just at the end of last week's Pasha. You'll remember at the end of Shlach, the last paragraph, very familiar to us all, um, because it's the third portion of the Shema. It's the instruction of Tzitzit. Um, and uh, coming from there, um, the, oh, sorry, that was not Tanchum, but rather Bereshit Rabbah. So the Medrash in Bereshit Rabbah says, um, when Korach took, that's the first verse of the parasha, um, what comes just before that, um, the end of last week's parasha, they shall make for themselves a fringe. Um, so Korach interrupts, and he said to Moshe, um, and, and in other versions of the Medrash, they, they dress themselves. Uh, a garment that is crafted completely of sky blue wool, we call the techelet, which is what you're supposed to dye one of the strings of the tzitzit. Would it be exempt from tzitzit? So in, in the version that you know, I remembered of this medrash, which is obviously not uh, this one, um, they actually all got dressed up in, in blue cloaks and they stood there and they said, Moshe, this is a, a garment made entirely of this blue 
uh, of this blue wool, um, do we need to have tzitzit? And Moshe says yes. And Korach says, um, a garment crafted completely of sky blue doesn't exempt itself, but four threads exempt it. And then challenge two, a house that's filled with Torah scrolls. Would it be exempt from a mezuzah? Uh, I mean, there you go. Uh, he said to them, no, it needs a mezuzah. Um, and Korach counters the whole Torah in its entirety contains 260, 275 paragraphs, and that doesn't exempt the house. One paragraph, was actually two, that is in the mezuzah, exempts the house, and he said to them, you were not commanded these matters, but rather you fabricated it from your heart, and, and that is Korach took. So it seems um, that Korach um, is kind of saying if you have a garment entirely made of blue, and that's the juxtaposition to the end of last week's parasha. It shouldn't require tzitzit. Um, if you have a um, house that is filled with Torah school, it shouldn't need a mezuzah. And of course, that's the lead up to kol ha'ida kulam kedoshim. The entire congregation is all holy. Why do you raise yourself? Why do you have a situation where you're making some people be, be holier um, and, and be more elevated uh, than others. Um, what is this class you created with Kohanim and Levim? Never mind. I mean, Korach himself was, was a Levi. Um, so what he's arguing for is kind of a, a form of religious socialism. You know, we're all the same. We're all equal. There are no class distinctions. Um, and uh, there's no reason why there should be anybody greater than anyone else. We don't need to have a coin ghetto. We are a holy nation. We all stood at the foot of Manzana. God spoke to each one of us equally. Therefore, why does it have to be a class of Kohanim or the priests? Why does it have to be a coin ghetto? Uh, and, and the implication is, why does it have to be a, you know, a, a king, uh, which is Moshe Rabbeinu? We are all holy. The reality is that the way made in the way Hashem made this world, there are distinctions. There are distinctions um, in, in all the dimensions of this world. And I don't talk about the, the ge ge geometrical dimensions, I talk about the various dimensions in this world, which actually refer to the acronym for this is Ashan. Ashan means smoke, right? So Ashan is Ayin, Shin, and Nun. Ayin stands for Olam, the world. Space. So in the dimension of space, there are consecrated spaces and there are less consecrated spaces. Your shul is holier than your home, uh, which is obviously holier than the street. In shul itself, you have uh, the bimmer, you have the ark, etc. You have a holy land. Uh, that's very kindly before Ashe began, one of the participants invited me to come and visit. Within the holy land, you have Jerusalem, holier than that, and then you have, in fact, the, 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 the uh, Mishnah uh, distinguishes 10 layers of holiness in Eretz Israel itself, uh, going all the way from the Holy of Holies, uh, that's the, the, the highest point, all the way to the periphery of Israel, or rather it, it, it describes it kind of in, in concentric, smaller circles, starting from the whole land and ending up with the spot of the Holy of Holies. That's the dimension of space or Olam. We find distinctions in, in time as well. There are consecrated times, and there are times that are less consecrated. Of course, we, we want to consecrate uh, all of time, um, but there are definitely days that are inherently holier than others. We get it weekly with Shabbos, we get it with uh, annually with festivals, and we get a sabbatical year every seven years, we get a jubilee year every 50 years. So the, the periods of time that are consecrated are holier than others. And the third one, Nun, for Nefesh, for soul, that's a human dimension. There are also, in the way Hashem has said that, class distinctions going from uh, his chosen people uh, to a smaller circle of you know, the tribe of Levi, the Kohanim, all 12 tribes, each with their distinct roles. Uh, and it's not like Korach says, it's all one and the same. That's not the way Hashem made the world. And uh, this becomes evident in the response that Moshe gives to Korach. What does he say to him? He says, tomorrow, in the morning, God will make it known. Now, now, what, is, what kind of answer is that, tomorrow morning? Um, 
I mean, it's not a good idea to let it fester. It wasn't a good idea, idea to let it fester. Um, and, and it was a bad night. And Korach went around, rabble-rousing and, and inciting people and creating support for themselves. It was an awful night. Uh, what made him say tomorrow? Um, Hashem said, he spoke to Korach and his company and says, um, come morning, Hashem will make it known who is God and who is holy. Um, and the one that Hashem has chosen will be granted access. Now, now what is this idea of the boker, this morning? Um, here's a very interesting medrash. Um, the medrash, this is Tanchuma, indeed, and the medrash gives a number of interpretation to this in the morning. Um, and this is what the medrash says. Moses said, the Holy One, left is he, has distinguished boundaries for those in his world. Can you confuse morning with evening? Um, what does it say in the verse? In the beginning, Genesis 1, there was evening and there was morning. God separated light and darkness for its use in the world. Just like he made a separation between the light and the darkness, he separated Israel from the nations. Um, and he quotes the verse, I've separated from the other peoples. He separated Aaron. Aaron was separated to consecrate the most holy things. And if you can confuse the distinctions in which you made a separation between the day and the night, you may be able to nullify this. So basically, it's challenging and you're saying um, there are distinctions. The world is not uniform. If you can, uh, if you can in some way book, you can, you can, you can make the morning go away. You can say night and they're the same. That's just one of the separations that she made in a world that is, you know, that is separated, that is uh, uh, differentiated. So that's the meaning, he says. In the morning, Hashem will make known those who belong to him. Uh, that person is already designated, um, and the one who he will choose, he will have drawn near to him. Um, and hence the, uh, the challenge of the senses that Korach takes, etc. The Medrash continues. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing here that... Um, Boker is 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 not just uh, you know, wait till the morning and all will become you know wait till daddy comes home. It's not kind of a, a, a time frame. It's actually a challenge to Korach. Can you make day and night you know blend into one? No, a day comprises of a portion which is night and a portion which is day, and together it's yom. Together it's a day, uh, and and likewise with the other dimensions we we're talking about. Uh, earlier. There is distinction, um, but at the same time that there is distinction, they are consecrated and less consecrated and, 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 and separate uh, roles for different people, uh, different places, and different times. Um, there is also an integration. The integration is extremely important. Um, so let's take the, the weekly cycle. I can give you all the examples that will take forever. The weekly cycle. Shabbos and the week integrate. They're separated. Okay? Shabbos is the one day of the week, and it starts on Friday night, and ends on Saturday night, and, and that's Shabbos. But then there's integration. Not only because you can, you can, you should add to Shabbos. So you take a little bit of the week, and you kind of make it Shabbos. So if you light candles... 18 minutes before sunset, if you uh, make Havdalah a few minutes after nightfall, that's adding from you know, the, 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 the profane to the holy, from, from the unsanctified. But there's also an interchange between Shabbos and the week. So um, Shabbos is referred to, the words are from the Zohar, so they are in Aramaic, minei mit barchim kule yomin. From Shabbat, all the days of the week that follow are blessed by Shabbat. Shabbat kind of casts its aura onto the entire week. But also, um, and that's in the Gemara, it says, He who toiled, Mishit Tarach, but Erev Shabbat, Yachal Ba Shabbat. Um, if you have toiled um, Erev Shabbos, you eat on Shabbos. If you didn't prepare food before Shabbos, well, you're not allowed to cook on Shabbos. You're going to have, you know, whatever is in the fridge. Uh, it's not going to be a, a tasty Shabbos meal, but it's more than that. It's saying the Shabbos is a culmination of the spiritual investment that you put into the prior six days. Not just that you you shopped and you cooked and you cleaned, um, but you actually invested spiritually into Shabbos. So Shabbos integrates, but it's distinct. Um, if we talk about the dimension of place, of space, 
Uh, the holiest of all places is is the Beit Hamikdash. Uh, in the Beit Hamikdash, we have the Holy of Holies. Um, the sanctuary um, was built in such a way that light would shine out. It was symbolic of the fact that sanctity. So they made the windows in the shape that maximizes output of light rather than, you know, uh, a, 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 a you know a room should be built in such a way, a house should be built in such a way that that the the orifices, the openings, bring in light, not that they let the light come out. That's inside. Um, but in the temple, the windows were made. Uh, in a shape that kind of maximized the output of light, um, and that uh, was symbolic of the fact that the the kedusha, the sanctity of that place, had to spread uh, all over. So that it was separate, but it integrated. Um, and we pray through the holy of holies. So the integration works both ways. When we dive in, not only do we face the Holy of Holies, so that's if we're here uh, in South Africa, it's north towards Israel, and Israel, wherever you are, you're going to be facing Jerusalem. In Jerusalem itself, of course, you face uh, the, the place of the Holy of Holies. So, but it's more than that. Our prayers must be focused. And we must realize that our prayers are going to Yerushalayim and from Yerushalayim, uh, digging up to heaven. Uh, verse, I think, in Daniel, um, and, and we shall pray to him through his land. Uh, that, that that's how. Likewise, the human dimension. Um, there are people with distinct roles. Uh, it's not about superiority. Uh, it's about integration once again. It's about the Kohanim, who are our teachers, who are our rebels, uh, teaching us, um, inspiring us. It's about us by uh, developing a relationship with the person who is holier than ourselves, uh, you know, being able to come closer to Hashem in that way. Um, so that is um, that is where we have distinction, though there is integration. Uh, and this is something that uh, Korach was challenging, or maybe not understanding fully. Um, the idea that, yes, the entire nation is holy, uh, but every person is holy in their own different uh, special but distinct way and there has to be integration there has to be um interchange between the various sectors of, of the community so if you go to the Tamil Baba Batra there is a fascinating series of stories about a rabbi called Rabbi Baba Khana and he traveled through you know, the deserts and the seas, and he comes back with fables. They're probably mostly kind of legends, um, metaphors, and not real stories. Um, some of them are quite fantastical, like you know, huge fish or whales that he thought were islands until they started shifting. Very, very interesting uh, uh, stories that you need to 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 read uh, with a pinch of salt and pinch of salt and good commentary so you understand, you know, what the deeper uh, uh, stories behind the, the stories uh, are really. Um, and there, in that uh, Gemara, um, Baba Khana continues his story. Um, there was at some point an Arab that he had met, um, and the Arab says to him, come, I'm going to show you those who were swallowed uh, due to the sin of Korach. Um, and he takes him to a place in the desert where he sees that there is uh, you know, an opening in the ground. That's what's called the, the opening of the of, of the ground, as referred to in Pirkeavot, that we're going to read in the Parashat on Shabbos, the earth opened up, and there's smoke coming out. And this Arab takes a shearing of wool, dips it in water, and then puts it on the head of a spear and into the hole. When he removes it, it's scorched. Okay. Fascinating. But there comes part two of the story. He said, listen to what you can hear. Um, and Rabbi Bachana puts his ear to the ground. He listens to what comes out of the hole. And this is what he hears. Moses and his Torah are true. And they, in other words, uh, uh, the people of, of, uh, um, of Korach, are liars. Those of us down here, we are liars. Moshe and his Torah are true. This is um, what they hear. Uh, these people in their whole um, 
saying. Um, so I, I don't know how that fits in with what I was telling you before uh, about the fact that they spend their week in an unpleasant place. Maybe that's what they get dragged to. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that works. Um, but here's the interesting thing. Um, how would you say Moshe and his Torah are true? Moshe emet, Torah to emet. There we go. Mo, sorry. Moshe the Torah to emet. Moshe and his Torah are true. Hein badayin. And them, that's us. We are liars. Look at that word emet. Um, and in that word emet, we have the story of Korach alluded to with the Aleph, Mem, and Taf. Of course, what was their rebellion? First of all, uh, there was the appointment of Aaron. That's the Aleph. So they challenged the fact that Moshe had appointed um, Aaron um, to a position which they felt was nepotism. Um, and now they're admitting, Emet, Aaron. Then we had the story with the uh, uh, the home filled with Torahs and the challenge as to whether it is obliged to have a mezuzah. And then they came dressed in those blue garments made of techelet, and they said, if you wear a garment made of techelet, you still need to put that sit, sit on it. So there's uh, some 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 kind of poetic, um, um, what is it, poetic, just poetic in, interpretation here, uh, allusion in the fact that those are the words that they're using to admit we made a big mistake. We we're completely out of line. When we argued, there's total equality. There is definitely uh, a, a, you know, a distinction between some humans and others, um, just like um, you know, the, 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 we need a government with chedet and we need a home with a mezuzah. The Talmud tells us, also in Baba Batra, based on a verse, in the Torah, Shmot, Bnei Korach Lometu. So the sons of Korach didn't die. So we exactly what happened to them? Did they go into the ground? Didn't they go into the ground? It's, I'm very confused about the whole thing, and I, I've never been able to kind of understand it properly. It says they were swallowed in the ground, and then they ended up in Gehenna, but they got a a very high place, and, and there they, they're singing praise of Hashem, they're composing psalms. You know, the book of Psalms, the Hillel, uh, which we you know, generally attribute to uh, to um, to King David, um, this is a very special to Hillel, because this was uh, I digress, my grandfather arranged this for me. Uh, this uh, one Shabbos morning, uh, spent the morning on the Rebbe's Stende, uh, in 770, uh, at the end of the service, the Rebbe took out the, the used my Tehillim, uh, which uh, my grandfather had written my name in, as you can see, um, and uh, he used it to say to him at the conclusion of the service, and then my grandfather went and retrieved it uh, and gave it to me. So it's, a, it's special to him, so I'm sharing that with you. Um, the, the entire book wasn't actually composed from scratch, but David Amelach. Um, and if you look through, you will find that there's a you know, tefillah de Moshe uh, and the psalms you know, composed by other people, which King, King David um, had uh, always knew existed or through Ruch HaKodesh was able to kind of recompose them and compile them into a book. Um, so there are 11 psalms that are composed by the sons of Korach. Um, so some of them are very, very famous. And we're going to look at at, at a couple of them now, and, and you'll see why. Um, because something fascinating comes out when you study these 11 Psalms. I'm only going to look at you know, three or four of them, or five maybe. Um, Sons of Korach, Asir, Elkana, and Eliasaf um, sing uh, praises of Hashem in Psalms. You're going to find a very fascinating theme coming out. Remember, Korach the dad said, all places are equal, all men are equal, and all times are equal. Um, say the son of Korach in Psalm 42. All right, there we go, for the conductor. Emaskil, 
of the sons of Korach. And there we go. I think it's in the fifth verse. I walked slowly with them until the house of God, with a joyful shouting and thanksgiving, a celebrating multitude. So um, there is a recognition that there is a house of God, there is a temple, uh, a holier place uh, than other places on earth. We move on to Psalm 45. Okay, what do we have again? Um, for the conduct of Shoshanim, of the sons of Korach, uh, a masculine a song of loves. I skip to verse 16, I had to admit some. They shall come forth into the king's palace. So you can see this, um, this theme of acknowledgement um, of um, you know, the fact that there are places that are holier than others. Here we're talking about in uh, Psalm, this one is um, 45, what do we got? 42, 45, 46, right? 46, um, and song for the sons of Korach in the fifth verse, um, but as for the river, its river shall cause the city of God, place of the dwellings on the most high to rejoice. So once again, the recognition um, that there is a holier place. I move on to Psalm um, um, 47. Conduct the sons of Korach a song. Um, that's a famous psalm um, because this is said on Rosh Hashanah before Shofar seven times over. Um, all people clap hands, shout to God with a voice of praise um, and and uh, it's an introduction to Shofar. But here, um, Tisha calls Choose our inheritance for us. Okay, we're talking about a, a special place uh, which Hashem is going to choose. Of course, Yerushalayim or Israel, uh, whichever one it is. Um, in Psalm 48, this is the um, Psalm of the day for, uh, for, for Monday. Yeah, uh, Lord is great and very much praised in the city of our Lord, the Mount of His Sanctuary. Right, first of branches, draw the entire earth, Mount Zion. Uh, by the north side, city of the great king. Amazing description. I mean, it's a beautiful song. On a Monday morning stop, we read it nicely. Um, and, uh, you know, a description of Yerushalayim, Harib, Sarimadar, Jerusalem, surrounded, uh, walk around uh, the gates of Jerusalem, etc. Um, and then, finally, I mean, there are more, uh, but here is Psalm 84, uh, and this is for the conductor of the sons of Korach, a song, how beloved are you dwelling places, O Lord of hosts? I saw yearns, pines of the courts of the Lord. So there we have the sons of Korach with a recognition that yes, yes, there are places that are holier than others. Um, so at the end of Shabbos, we make a bracha. What do we call that? The bracha is called Havdalah, distinction. Precisely what Korach argued did not exist. Okay? There was no such thing as Havdalah of separation, when Hashem instructs the Jewish people to remove themselves from the camp of Korach because the earth is about to um, remove, um, open up. Hibadlu mitochai dazot. Separate yourself from this congregation. So there is a concept of a separation, uh, and that's how we end our Shabbos, just before the family of Korach have got to resume their the weekday positions. Right? Uh, blessed are you, Hashem, uh, who distinguishes between the holy and the profane, the light and darkness, is one of the nations. The seventh day and the six working days, blessed are you, Hashem, who distinguishes between the holy and the profane. Um, so this is, uh, this is Havdalah, that he said um, at the end of um, our Shabbos, um, and the wine, that extra wine is poured um, because this is really where uh, the sin of Korach and it's a tribute to them or the credit for them uh, that we want to pour over some wine from our cups um, to, to mark that, uh, that, 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 that ceremony of, of distinction. Thank you very much.